Hey, Aaron. Mark Kitching. Hey. How are you? I'm well. Can you see me all right? Uh, I see your, um, you know, it's saying that my... Yeah, okay. What about now? Can you see it okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so I'm Aaron Davis, and you're watching BusinessFrame.com. BusinessFrame is a, a website with which uh, any independent contractor, a real estate agent, an insurance agent, uh, a yoga instructor can build themselves an internet website, um, and also on a daily basis get some tips on a on a way to to not only build a better business but to live a little bit better life, and um, as we like to say, a successful life and a happy life. So, um, without further ado, uh, Mark Kitching is on the program today from the Partners Trust. He's a real estate agent, specifically working in Venice, California, uh, in, in overall uh, Los Angeles. So, uh, uh, really briefly, Mark, uh, what did you do before you got involved in real estate? Uh, I was actually involved in television. I was for television and was in uh, media production. Okay, and, and what, what, is, what does that mean, media production? Well, most of my work was in production management, so I, I managed talent and crew and staff and schedules and budgets and all that garbage. <laughs> Fair enough. And so real estate, and, and what, what brought you to real estate? Uh, actually, you know, I was doing some, in, some research for investing in real estate in Florida where my family is. And I just fell in love with, uh, with the business side of it and with properties themselves and my brothers in landscaping. So, uh, you know, I had a fascination for it for a long time and um, realized that, you know, we were in kind of a crazy market and uh, I decided that it was something I was interested in and wanted to, to give it a shot. Uh, very cool. And, and what, what part of the business of real estate it, it piqued your interest the most? Uh, probably, well, at first it was, uh, I saw the, the potential for being very lucrative and, uh, and having the time to, you know, manage, the time that you manage yourself, that, uh, you know, you work for yourself, and uh, I've been a big component of uh, entrepreneurship my entire life, and, um, and that was really a big part of it, it was basically being my own boss. Certainly, and, and, and from my, my personal experience as a real estate agent, and from that, which I hear from other folks, having the ability to sort of create your own reality is a major, major asset to, to getting into the industry initially. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, and and does, that, does that always mean that you're going to be able to take off every afternoon, or does that mean that <laughs> yeah, <be> right. <laughs> or does that mean you might be working more hours? No, uh, I mean, half the time you, your buddies are watching Sunday football and you're sitting in an open house. So there, there's definitely some things you have to sacrifice uh, in order to get your business up and going. Um, you know, but uh, there's, there's days and uh, moments where you're really glad that, that you got into it and uh, you wouldn't be doing anything else. Certainly, and that's a, really, that's a good segue. Um, one of the things that a lot of folks think about in, in, that I've spoken with and that I've worked with over the years has been success, you know, and, 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 and they, they want to, you know, they see, um, they might see something on television or they've read the stories or they've got a friend or a relative that may be in real estate or, or working in sales and they talk about the success that they've created. So, Mark, how, how do you measure success? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I measure success, for me, I measure success from uh, the freedom in which I have to do the things that I love. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, I, I love business. I love real estate. I also love traveling and eating and drinking and hanging out with my friends and family. And, uh, and those things are very important to me also. So having that freedom is, uh, is very important. And I think, um, you know, to which I, I have that freedom is how successful I've been. And so what what is the catalyst for for having freedom? Well, I mean, I think just uh, it's hard work. It comes down to having hard work, good work ethic, and uh, being willing to set aside some of your personal uh, desires and, and short-term goals for your long-term goals. Wow, that's pretty profound. Um, when you and how long have you been selling real estate? Uh, just about five years now. Five years, 
And did you start right in as an agent, or did you have a little bit of a transition, or how, how did that come about? You know, you were so you were working in television. Sure. Uh, you're you're from Georgia. I'm from Georgia. Uh, I moved out here about seven years ago to get into television, and realized pretty quickly that it wasn't for me. Right. And I got into I did the real estate market was sort of starting to dive at the moment that I decided to get in. Sure. Uh, that didn't deter me at all. I knew that it's a it's a fluctuating market, and even though we've had quite the downturn, I knew eventually it would turn back around. And um, you know, I, I was in in it for the business. I loved the business side of it and uh, the people side of it as well. So um, you know, the the down market didn't deter me. I did want to learn as much as I possibly could. And uh, at the same time, get a paycheck. Um, so I wasn't in the position to be an agent right up front, and it was probably a blessing in disguise uh, that I did go on and, and assist some of the top agents in town uh, to learn the business from the inside out before I uh, excelled and went out on my own. Do you recommend? And, and so, so you were an assistant for a, a team of agents. Yes. Okay. And were you a solitary assistant? Were you by yourself working with them? Uh, at times, I was by myself, and at times, we had more than one person. But for the most part, I was the full-time assistant for about two years, two and a half years, actually, um, with a great team um, in Brentwood at Sotheby's. Okay. And from there, I, I learned the business and, uh, and then went on my own. To you, would you say that that's, a, that's a, uh, a positive career path for somebody that's just starting out to say, you know... Um, if you don't have prior experience or a tremendous amount of experience, maybe you want to go and be an assistant for a couple of years before getting into selling full time. I, I highly recommend it. I mean, it, it's it's hard to go out. You might go out and sell one or two houses your first year and, and make okay money, but if you work with a team that's selling you know twenty, thirty properties in that year, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of different uh, a lot of different approaches to offers and sales and working with buyers. And uh, I don't think there's really a comparison to uh, to working with under a team that really has a lot of knowledge and experience. Uh, it's the best way to get educated. Great. And, and that my, my next question was going to be, you know, what might have you what what did you learn? Uh, as being part of a team that you might not have learned had you just gone straight out and, and been an agent? Well, uh, you know, I mean, it, it comes down to anyone can read a contract, and uh, anyone with half a brain can realize that it's not that difficult for a transaction to take place. But if there's so many nuances with real estate deals, and so many things that can go wrong, and you really only learn how to handle those situations by being involved with them. And uh, either you learn from your mistakes or you learn from others' mistakes. But you ultimately, you have to be in the nuts and bolts of it all to see how it really works. And uh, that's why I think you know, working under someone uh, to get that education under your belt is, is highly important. Wow. And do you have any sort of suggestion or advice for, a, um, for someone that's... Um, Tired of working in, in television and, and ready to make a transition and thinking that they appreciate a, a legal contract and, and, are, and are good with people and want to get into real estate and you know maybe it would you know they need to get a paycheck so they're, they're thinking about maybe an assistantship or, or, or something like that. Do you have any advice on how to find that? How to find it? You know, I I would um, I think who you go work for is really going to make or break how your decision um, comes out as far as how you appreciate the business in itself because all brokers are different. They all work completely different. And, um, you know, it's really tough to say, yeah, just go to Craigslist and find the first job. Uh, I think one thing you want to first focus on is, is an area in which you, you really like and you prefer to work in. And from there, find an agent that, that has been successful in that area and try to, to mentor with them or apprentice with them, and if, uh, if no job's available, uh, you know, just sort of uh, get your foot in the door any way possible. But I, I definitely suggest getting in with one of the more successful agents that's been in the business for a while, uh, because that's where you're going to get your true education. Sure, and when you say area, you mean geographic area? Geographic area. Right. And all of Los Angeles is, is too big of a, a monster to tackle. You know, you want, you want to pick certain neighborhoods. 
And right. you know, most brokers really find a niche market in certain neighborhoods, and uh, and that, those are the ones that are really successful. Right. So to reiterate, so first things first is to find an area that one, you know, if I'm if I'm just starting out and I live in um, and I live in Chicago and and I'm tired of doing whatever I've been doing for the past few years, I'm ready to make a career transition, which a lot is taking place quite a bit nowadays, uh, and I'm thinking about real estate as an avenue, first thing I'm going to think about is my area, geographic area, where I would feel comfortable working. And then the second thing would be to, to seek out a, uh, a successful agent or two or three. And Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're not always going to get along with a person. Sure. So, and you've got to think about this as more of a, I would, I would say at least, you know, consider a year um, of, of learning and assisting um, before you can move on on your own, and I, I would even recommend more than that if if uh, if you can do it. Um, or some people just feel like they're they're too tied down and they want to go out on their own. But I think the more education, the better, and the more experiences that you go through, the better. So yeah, I would, if you're coming from Chicago, you know, I would identify the place where you're going to live and. Um, you know, try to find out who the best agents in that town are, and identify ten, twelve people, and try to meet with all of them. Right, and you, and you you suggest calling them and meeting with them, and actually, you know, selling yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be doing this with everybody that you meet from here on out. So, I mean, if you're going to be in this business, you have to be able to put yourself out there on a plate and say, "Here's who I am. Here's what my work ethic is like." And, uh, you know, I think agents in these days, especially successful ones, appreciate that. And they'll see that you've got a great work ethic and, you know, that you're willing to work hard and, uh, and not afraid to put yourself out there. And, and that's what's going to get you far and make you successful. That's great. That's awesome. So what what is a... Obviously, real estate is so... Um, it, it is a bit nebulous, you know, they're... they're and it's by law that there's no commission written in on a, on a contract. Is there any sort of boilerplate or is there any sort of status quo with regards to compensation as an assistant? How does that work? Well, you know, honestly, I don't really know. Um, I, I mean, I've seen everything from a, a, just a flat salary paycheck month to month or week to week. I think it really depends on what the the hiring agent is looking for. If you're looking for someone to, to grow and help their business uh, not only maintain, but just kind of to build their office, uh, then you know, it's probably more of a salary position. Uh, if you're looking for an assistant that's going to grow and actually create new business uh, for the agent by bringing in their own clients and joining in as a team, then I think uh, you know, commission plus bonuses uh, are definitely in, in the works. Um, but there's not really any true, uh, any true uh, solution to how to pay an assistant. I think as long as you're getting your education and you're making ends meet, uh, for me that was enough. Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Um, you've recently joined. I don't know how recently it is, but you, you're part of uh, a, a relatively new company in the Partners Trust. What made you decide to go to them? Well. It was a pretty easy decision, Aaron. I, I've known the guys who, the founders of Partner Trust, most, most of them, uh, for years now. Uh, we all worked together in the same office, uh, several years ago. And it's such an incredible group of people, and I admired what they did by going out and branching out and starting their own company, and especially how the, the services that are offered to our clients now are second to none. So it was a very easy decision for me to join Partner Trust. So as a kernel of advice to someone that's trying to pick a brokerage to choose, one, most important, the people that are there that are already there, and then two, what they provide as a, as a service or not provide, I suppose, as an option as well. Yeah, well, if someone's first starting out, it's tough to tell them which brokerage to go with, even though I, I think we're the best brokerage in town, uh, you know, we... We don't allow anyone to come in. We're not like one of these other brokerages who just want another sales force on their team. Uh, we're, we're a collection of high, highly uh, ethical and like-minded individuals who have uh, proven themselves in the business and, uh, and create a certain level of class 
and professionalism that uh, I hope you know most other brokers can look up to. And if you're just starting out, I mean, obviously, I would recommend trying to find someone in, in one of our offices to mentor under. And um, you know, the classes and so forth that, that we put forward are more in the intermediate to advanced level. Um, but, you know, as far as someone just starting out and getting an assistant job, anyone that a part of the trust you, that you can mentor under would be an excellent move. Well, sure. And, and, and the reason why I was speaking about that, you know, pe folks are going to be tuning into this from all over the country and perhaps mm -hmm. even overseas. So um, not just for Los Angeles, but in choosing a brokerage overall, you know, things to think about with regards to choosing where you work. Uh, it was my experience that um, the people that I worked with were just as important as the company that I worked for. So, um, oh, 100%. And I think even more so uh, than, you know, just as important. I think that it's the most important thing. Uh, you've got to be happy in the office that you're in. You've got to, it's got to have a, a really good vibe and feel. And the people that you work around and that you work with, you've got to really respect. And if you don't, then, you know, then you're basically a, a fish out of water. And uh, I think uh, at the Partners Trust, we're all very similar, like-minded people. And uh, that's why we are as successful as we are. That's great. And, and if somebody wanted to get more information about the Partners Trust, what's the website? Uh, www.thepartnerstrust.com. Thepartnerstrust.com. Okay. Um, what are three ways that uh, you've been able to get new clients? And uh, granted, I, I, I would assume and I imagine um, that you got, at, when you were an assistant and as you transitioned from being an assistant into being your own, being an agent for yourself, that right. there, was, there may have been a little bit of overlap and that sort of thing. It's not what I'm asking about. I'm curious to know, how have you been able to get new clients on your own accord? Well, absolutely, the, the number one thing I recommend for getting new clients is sitting open houses. Uh, you can cold call as many people as you'd like, but I think the face-to-face -face interaction is, is the most important thing. And meeting people face-to-face, -face, getting them in front of you and, and, and getting to know someone else as well as them getting to know you, uh, you'll not only create a rapport with that person, uh, but you'll know whether or not you want to work with them. Uh, I mean, if you get one decent connection with the person at an open house, uh, to me, that's a successful open house. Uh, I know a lot of people love to knock on doors. Uh, that's not really for me. Uh, I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but it works for a lot of people. So uh, for me, one would be open houses. Uh, second would be asking my friends and uh, neighbors uh, that I know well uh, if they know anybody that's looking to buy or sell. Uh, it's more, way more of a soft sell and a warm lead than anything else. And thirdly, it would definitely be from past clients' referrals. And to me, there's no better compliment than having someone say, hey, you know, I think you did such a great job with us. I, I want you to work with a friend of mine. Uh, to me, that's that's gold. Right. Well, one one thing that in, in speaking to other agents and, and just you know, in my own experience as a broker, um, some folks they, they don't like asking for that business. They they feel <laughs> like they're being pushy if they ask their neighbor or if they you know. How do you? I mean, how do you do that such so that you don't feel so pushy and you know? Yeah, well, and that's something I'm really always concerned with is not to feel like I'm I'm selling or being too pushy. And you know, to be honest, there's no uh, no real solution to that either. It's it's really a case by case basis. Um, you have to just have to have a uh, you know a connection with someone and feel where where the balance is between being you know overly confident and asking for the business or um, or backing off a little, and sometimes I might ask somebody, you know, right off the bat, uh, and other times it might take me, you know, several interactions with the person to, to ask them for business. So there's no there's no real reason, no real answer to that question. It all is a case by case basis for me, at least. Okay. Real quick before we go any further, is there any way you might be able to adjust your computer a little bit? It's, yes. it's really really dark. Is it? You might be able to just adjust something. The, the, the levels are a little no. bit better. You know what? I don't know. Uh, if, maybe if you got a light that's the behind the computer. 
the sun's going down a little bit. Hold on, let me see if I can. Uh, let me see. Um, there you go. I'll just change positions. How about that? So it's really comfortable there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, actually, that's much better. That's much better. Okay, good. All right. Uh, okay. Um, so three things. The, the first thing being open houses, meeting with real buyers um, in open houses, um, asking friends and neighbors, and then asking for referrals from pa past clients. That's right. Two follow-up questions on that. At an sure. open house, is there okay. any sort of method to the madness with regards to articulating yourself, your value, your company, such that you can put your very best foot forward? Uh, there, there is, but the, I think it's more of uh, your actions speak louder than words. You know, if, if someone walks into my open house and the, you know, I've got four lights on and, um, you know, the toilet seats are up and it's, it, it smells and it's like you really represent um, who you are by how you hold your open houses. So you want to make sure that, that you, you have the best open house in the neighborhood, even if it's the worst house. And I, I think that's that's Where's really you? key. I'm just writing notes. That's a key point. Um, okay. And then, and then for the other one, um, the second follow-up with regards to asking friends, is there anything that you do in particular? Sure, it's case by case. If you're at a party and somebody mentions real estate, that's a certainly a, a good segue. Mm -hmm. But is there any sort of... Uh, methodical or mechanical way that you ask for referrals so that things don't slip through the cracks? Well, yeah, in a way. I mean, I, I think you're always uh, cognitive of the sense that you're in this business and this is what you do is sell homes and, you know, one of your jobs 24-7 is to make sure that people are aware that you sell homes. And, you know, from, from my point of view, it doesn't always have to come down to, hey, do you have someone that you know, that he wants to buy or sell a home, it's more of, uh, you are aware that I sell homes, and if anyone's ever looking, you know, you, you're going to go to me, right? And it's almost, uh, it's, it doesn't have to be in the, that verbiage, but it's more so of um, making sure that everyone that you know knows that you're in the business and you, you work very hard and that you have clients and that you are successful and that, uh, that you're willing to work hard for them. And, and that's the most important thing. I mean, sometimes your, your neighbor might need, not even know that you've sold them, that you sell houses, and that happened to me before. And I promise you, it's not going to happen again. They're going to know. <laughs> it doesn't mean they have to use me, but they're going to know that I sell houses. It's not going to be a mistake I make again. Sure, sure. Well, that's a really good segue. Um, somebody come brand new into the industry. Lots of stuff is moving around. Things are going 100 miles a minute. You're learning about contracts and how to get clients and how to get your business cards printed and where do I get certified and all these different things. Right. What are three major pitfalls that a brand new agent can avoid? Well, I think, uh, I think one of the main pitfalls that a new agent um, can avoid is being overzealous. I, I think they get in there, they think that you know, they're, all they need is one sale or two sales and they can make this, uh, this, the whole, you know, their whole salary from last year from their previous nine to five job. Uh, they get a client that they meet in an open house and they think they basically count their money before it's in the bank. And one thing that you know well, Aaron, as much as anybody who's been in the business is that, you know, you, you might think you have a great client that's going to buy or sell a house, but, uh, it's not the case. Um, you're probably going to meet 10 people uh, that are seriously, seriously looking to buy or sell, and one of them might, might close the close the deal with you. So, uh, you know, you really got to, it's a numbers game to a certain extent. You've got to really pre-qualify the people you work with. And, um, you know, that that's a huge pitfall that, that I felt, you know, that I fell victim of when I first started is just becoming too excited about the clients that I thought that were going to be deals and they weren't. Sure. So, uh, so that's one. Uh, I think under uh, I think over uh, or under education is uh, is huge. I think uh, going back to being an assistant for two years and learning the ins and outs of the business through an incredible team uh, with Lisa Kirchner and Casey O'Brien is that um, 
is that you don't know. You don't know how to react when, you know, a, a certain situation in an escrow starts to fall apart. And, you know, if you have a great management system, you might be able to, uh, to band-aid the deal a little bit. But if you've been in the situation 30, 40 times before um, through someone else's experiences, you know how to handle it. And not only that, your buyers and sellers, they see that in you and they realize that you have that expertise and they feel comfortable. And, you know, the most important thing is to keep your clients comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I think that's huge you know, is to have your, your clients have confidence in you and that that really only comes with experience. So that's two. Um, and I think uh, another one probably is just um, uh, is is high expectations. I mean, it, granted, they, they might get excited. They have clients, but people think that they can uh, they can kind of cruise through this business just because they know a lot of people and uh and that's not necessarily the case. So when you say high expectations, that's high expectations for themselves? High expectations for themselves. I think they, they realize that, I think they think they can get in the business and they make a ton of money and uh, without putting in the work. And that's, that's just not the scenario. Sure. So it sounds like from one in three um, that a, a, a healthy slice of humble pie wouldn't be, <laughs> you wouldn't got be it. so bad. That's the one. Got it. Got it. I mean, Very yeah. cool. Well, I, I think that those that can really that, that can certainly help other people. I mean, I know that when I when I started, I was you know I was kicking and screaming and ready to go and, and yeah. doing everything I possibly could, and um, yeah. I fell victim to that. I, I I felt like you know I'm gonna make all kinds of money. I'm you know I'm working in real estate now, and it it, it was a uh, it was a rude awakening when it didn't quite work out that well. I feel you. I mean, you, you and me both. We've had you know eight and ten million dollar buyers sitting in the car and been yeah. in the business for one year, and we're like, woohoo! We're counting how much money that's going to be. Oh, that's yeah. going to be a check for two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and then they rent a six hundred six hundred dollar a month studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's uh, it'll hurt your feelings if you let it. I think, and that's <laughs> moving right along. Real estate is such an up and down business. One day you can close three properties and make a tremendous amount of money, uh, extremely lucrative. Other times you're working with that really big buyer and they go from wanting to buy an entire building to wanting to lease a studio apartment. How do you, you know, having a positive mental attitude and keeping a, 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 an optimistic outlook is crucial. How do you keep that, that happiness as part of your essence? Yeah, well, I, I think that's, I mean, it's hugely important, and for me, it's pretty easy. I mean, I think I, I live in one of the most amazing cities in the world, and I wake up every day in the sunshine, and it's, it's hard not to be happy when I don't have to wake up and go to work uh, at 7 a.m. for, some, for I, someone else. But I, I, to get what you're saying, I, I understand, to stay, to, stay, uh, to stay on track when you've got so many disappointments. Right with For with sure. other clients. How do you, how do you stay uh, positive in the face of so much adversity? Uh, I think I think you really just have to see it as uh, that comes with experience too. You have to know that this is going to happen and not think twice about it, not take it personally, uh, if, and really just own in on taking care of your clients. If they go from wanting to buy a ten million dollar building to renting a you know fifteen hundred dollar a month studio. You know, you, you you treat them just the same. It's the exact same, and ultimately, you know, the word the word will get out that you are professional in all ranges of the business, and that it doesn't matter the price point. And that's really the scenario for for me now, at least, is it, it doesn't matter the price point. Um, and ultimately, uh, it's all about servicing the client to their best needs because you never know what's going to happen. They might turn around in one year and buy that $10 million place, and if, if they had any inclination that you were disappointed or uh, upset with them, then you're not going to get that deal. Um, so it, it really it has, to, it has to come within. You have to stay uh, at the task at hand and realize that, that you're there for them in their best interest. And that'll come back to you tenfold. Where do you feel like you've reached a point where you need to fire a client? Um, 
that's a tough one, and I probably don't fire as many clients as I should. <laughs> um, it's true. Um, it comes down to the point where I feel like they are, uh, if, if they are spending too much time, um, if they're if they're wasting too much of my time, and I mean wasting in the sense that uh, that they're not taking advantage of of my my uh, my work for them. Uh, I work very very hard for my sellers and my buyers, and I think once they're out of touch with reality, is when uh, I start to sit down and ponder whether or not they should be included in my client list. And it's a tough decision. Um, but sometimes it's absolutely necessary because you'll end up spinning your wheels for someone that's not real. And I think once you, you have to really decide whether or not your client is a real client that, um, that is going to enhance your, your business and your life and not drag you down. And that's really where it comes down I to. I think that's a crucial distinction, especially for new people, is, the, is, the, is to know the difference between somebody that's actively taking advantage of your expertise as opposed to wanting somebody to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's huge. Yeah. Qualifying your buyers, is, I mean, that that's huge. And that probably should be one of my top three downfalls, is is, quali is properly qualifying your clients. It, it's so important. Right. So um, I had a couple other questions, but you've been so great. You've given me all this wonderful stuff, and it was all sort of ad-lib. There was a couple questions about some of the things on your website. Never mind all that. Uh -huh. is, Anything else that you would add? How can how can somebody get in touch with you? How can somebody find you if they're looking to, to buy or sell in LA? Yeah, you can call me at uh, my cell phone number is 310-902-0221 or you can uh, go on my website at www.markkitching.com and uh, you know say hello, I chat, see some properties and um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, this is Aaron Davis and with businessframe.com. Businessframe is a platform with which real estate agents, independent contractors um, can build a web presence and put their best foot forward. And we also like to, to highlight gentlemen such as, uh, and women, um, such as Mark, uh, on how to not only be successful at all, but also be happy. So thanks again, Mark, for tuning in. Thank, Thank you for you, coming Aaron. in, and Take we'll care. catch you next time. All right, buddy. Take care. You got